one of the more popular types of series is something called a geometric series. And this geometric series test is specifically used for series that have this format, the sum of, from n equals zero to infinity of a constant a times another constant r to the nth power. Uh, for example, um, the sum of five times one half to the n would be an example of a geometric series. Now it should be noted that the a and the r can never be combined because of order of operations. Exponents r to the nth power would need to be done before multiplying the a. So if you had six times two-thirds to the n, you can't multiply the six times the two-thirds, for instance. Uh, in any case, let, let's take a look at a simple example to kind of help us understand when these geometric series might converge and when they might diverge rather than just giving it away. Uh, for instance, let's say we had the sum of 2 to the n. Then if you expanded that, you'd have 2 to the 0, that's 1, plus 2 to the 1st, plus 2 to the 2nd, that's 4, plus 8, plus 16. It's pretty clear this is going to diverge because the terms are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So anytime you have a, a certain base, to where higher powers make the term get larger, it's no good. It's going to wind up diverging when you add them all up. Um, now, if you think about it, what would R need to be to guarantee that the power, uh, the term doesn't get larger with higher powers, but in fact gets smaller? Well, I, if you think about it for a minute, I think you would uh, come to realize it's the R values that are less than 1. Because if it, even if it was equal to 1, you get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 um, over and over again. So it can certainly be smaller than 1. Uh, it could even be 0. If you had 0, you'd have 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. That would converge. But how low can it actually go? Well, if you think about it, uh, I think you'd come to realize it would have to still be larger than negative 1 because if you went lower than negative 1, you'd run into the same problem. You'd get larger and larger terms uh, even though they would alternate sign, it would create a lot of problems and the, the series would diverge. So as long as the R value is between plus or minus 1, you're good, the series will converge. Um, that means it'll diverge if you're outside of minus 1 to 1. One way you can say that is if the absolute value of R, which takes care of any sign issues, is greater than or equal to 1. That's another way of saying that. Matter of fact, this one right here is often written the absolute value of R is strictly less than 1. So either of those notations would be fine. Uh, now one thing we need to mention though is uh, we haven't talked about A. Well, uh, one little piece of good news, um, the convergence does not depend on A. Because if you think about it, the A is almost like a, uh, a common factor of each of these terms and it, it doesn't depend on n. Only r has uh, an nth term in it and its little term is n being the exponent. The a is just a, a constant that's in every term in the sum. So if you wanted to, you could even take this a and factor it out. So obviously it has no bearing on the convergence or divergence of the series. Only, only r for a geometric series. So here's some super easy examples just to kind of get our feet wet. Uh, the sum n equals 0 to infinity of um, 2 times negative 1 third to the n it should be pretty clear this guy is going to converge because that r is between minus 1 and 1. Here we have another geometric series um, 5 thirds times 1.899 to the n um, that very clearly is going to diverge because that term is greater than 1. Now before I do the last example I'm, I need to make a little, little comment here. Um, to be, technically be a geometric series, the series has to start at zero. It's one of the only um, type of series that starts at a place other than one. You know, most of the series go from one to infinity, but geometric series have to start at zero. Uh, so the first two were, were very technically um, geometric series. Now, you look at this last one, it basically looks like a geometric series. Um, 5 times 7 eighths to the n. We anticipate it will converge, and, and in fact it will. In fact it will. Um, now, what about the 4, though? Because we're not actually, 
we're not actually starting at zero like we should to technically be a geometric series. Well, here's the deal. Uh, if you start at a later term, in effect what's happening is in this series, the third one, we're just missing the zero, first, second, and third terms. Now, just adding or subtracting, having them in there or not having them in there uh, will not affect whether a series blows up to infinity. Um, if, uh, if this is... Uh, infinite, when you add it up, tacking on the th the third term, the second, the first, and the zeroth term, it'll still be infinite. It doesn't matter how big or small they are. Uh, likewise, if this is finite, well, adding on a finite amount of terms to a finite sum will still make it finite. So um, even though this technically isn't a geometric series um, by the formal definition of starting at zero, it'll still converge just because um, it, it, uh, you're only talking about a finite amount of terms being being different. Now, where this really makes a difference is uh, in, in this next little topic we're going to talk about. Uh, if an infinite series really does converge, then there's actually a formula that will tell you what it converges to. Now, that's very surprising because over here I've got a list of all the other tests we've used so far, and there's uh, you can find videos um, on my channel for all of these. The, uh, the nth term test, it can tell you when a series diverges, not really so much when it converges, so it's kind of limited, but nevertheless, it doesn't tell you what it actually adds up to. Integral test, um, that's where it linked an improper integral with an infinite series, and it was very good. It told you whether your infinite series converged or diverged, but it didn't tell you what the answer was. It didn't tell you what it converged to. It just told you, yes, it converged or no, it doesn't. P-series test, same way. It'll tell you the convergence, but not what the actual sum is. Direct comparison test, nope. Limit comparison test, nope. Ratio test, nope. Root test, nope. This is one of the only tests that will actually give you what the convergence you know, really is. So if an infinite series converges, you take the A over 1 minus R, and that's what the actual sum is. So if we go back and we try these examples one more time, uh, notice the, the um, let's see, this one's not applicable because it didn't converge, but we can do it for the first one. This will be 2 over 1 minus negative 1 third, which will turn this into a plus. A minus minus will make that a plus. So this would be 4 thirds in the denominator, 2 over 4 thirds, we'll take the reciprocal, we'll get 6 fourths, which reduces to 3 halves. So yes, this converges, I already knew that, and this is what it added up to. Um, this diverged, no need to talk about that, but let's look at this last one here. This is an interesting one, because technically uh, the formula A over 1 minus R, assume we started at zero as we should have. So um, here's a little trick. We use this a lot, so, so pay attention here. Um, what you can do is you can actually use this formula uh, 5 over 1 minus 7 eighths. Now I understand that's not technically correct because that's if it was starting at zero. That's too much, it's too large, it's more than I should really have. Um, so what we would do knowing and understanding this is too much, let me actually slide this over knowing that uh, 5 over 1 minus 7 eighths is too much, I'm going to subtract out the, uh, the zeroth term, the first term, the second term, and the third term. So this is for n equals 0, 1, uh, 2, and 3, because they're embedded in this sum here, uh, and so I need to take them out. So this, um, we're just using the only formula we have and then we'll adjust uh, if it starts at a, a wrong value or whatnot. So I don't think I'm going to take the time to actually work out this algebra. I think you guys can work that out. But you'll just plug in 0. So for instance, this first one, I'll at least do that one, would be 5. 5 times 7 eighths to the 0. But then you would have minus 5 times 7 eighths to the first, and then 7 eighths to the second and the third, and so on and so forth. You take that away from that large sum, which is too big, and then that answer that you get, that will be what uh, this adjusted series um, starts out, uh, or, or winds up being. All right, now there's a, a very popular type of example 
that's often done, it's often given in, on test and whatnot um, for these geometric series. It's called a bouncing ball problem. If you click this link right here, I'm not going to do it in this video because um, I don't want it to, to get too long, but if you click on that, I'll work through a full bouncing ball problem, which uh, the, the sh short explanation of what happens is as a ball bounces, it has a distance uh, of so far and then a certain rebound percentage and up, down, up, down, up, down, and continually get smaller. And it turns out if you add up the distances that the ball travels, it turns out to be a geometric series. So it's a good practical application of, uh, of this uh, particular topic here.